This switch is why Chinese networking is so crazy. It has 48 two and a half gig ports, two 10 gig ports and two 25 gig ports all for just over $400. Now I was totally skeptical about this Chinese internet gaming cafe switch, but after testing it, Rohit and I were like, actually it's a lot better than we thought it was gonna be. But hold on, let's back up. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is a switch that I don't even know what it's called, but we managed to get it on Taobao as an internet gaming cafe switch. This was a tip from one of our STH readers that said you have to go check this out. These things sell for maybe just under $400 to just over $400 and they offer connectivity and features well beyond anything we can get in either the US or EU markets. Now guys, I have to level with you. We purchased this as kind of like a, well, maybe we're gonna go do this switch. And then we got it and uh, it took a long time to get here. And we're like, well, should we do this? Should we not do this? And finally uh, we said, well, why don't we just show people what this is? Because this is what's possible and you can't get if you're watching this video from the US or EU. So in this video, we're gonna go through all of the cool features of the switch and show you why it's actually a lot better than we thought it was gonna be. It's not definitely not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And before we get too far in this, I just wanna say thank you to all the STH YouTube members you can join down below if you want to help support us buying these units so we can actually show you all these kind of cool things that we may not be able to find on Amazon or through a US or EU reseller. Now to get this switch, we used a service called Superbuy. And what Superbuy is, is it allows you to buy things off of Taobao that normally don't ship to places like the US. Now we ordered two switches. One was the TP-Link that we already did a video on. We can find that in the description. And that one you can actually kind of get in the US a little easier. But then we also purchased this one. And you're gonna see that the price on this was just a little over $600. Now we were so excited about this switch that we got the expedited shipping, which ended up being over $140. So of that like 600 some dollars, 140 plus of that was just for the shipping. And frankly, the fast shipping was not very fast. Now, even at a little over $600, this would be by far the best value switch that you could get in either the US or the EU because there's just nothing like it that you can purchase in this price range with all of these features. And before we get to the hardware, I just wanna say we did look on like AliExpress and as of when we were recording this video, we could not find this switch on AliExpress. I don't think it's meant for export outside of China, but then we saw something in the management which makes us think maybe, maybe that might not be 100% correct. Still, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so looking at the switch, it's obviously a 1U rack mount unit. And on the front of the switch, you're gonna see that we have 48 two and a half gig ethernet ports. I guess if you're running a Chinese eSports cafe, you may wanna have two and a half gig ethernet because so many of the motherboards these days are able to offer two and a half gig and maybe that's just faster for updating games or whatever. And so that's why we have two and a half gig ethernet here. Now you're gonna see over here that we have the yellow optical cage plugs in, but those plugs are covering four ports and those four ports have two SFP plus 10 gig ethernet ports as well as two SFP 28 25 gig ethernet ports. There's another version of the switch that actually has two 40 gig ports, but um, you know, these days that's kind of just a weird, weird port config, right? The other thing you'll notice though, is that this switch has both console and management ports because unlike that TP-Link switch that we looked at previously, this has management features. You can get into a console and get a little CLI, or you can go into the you know management interface and we'll show you kind of how to log into that and all that in a little bit, but you can actually manage the switch. And we were surprised with how robust the management actually was. So continuing our journey around the switch on one side, we have vents. On the other side though, you're gonna see that we have both vents as well as fans. We're gonna get inside the, the switch and show you that in a little bit, but this does have fans. So it's definitely not a silent unit and uh, it's actually pretty darn far from that. The back of the switch has a grounding point as well as a power input. Now the power input actually has a little switch Okay, now looking at the bottom of the switch, we get our management logon. And the uh, IP and username password are actually kind of interesting here. It's 192.168.1.234, which seems a little bit random, but okay. And then the username and password is admin admin. And of course, to log in, you're not gonna need to go to HTTPS because that would just be silly. Something else that you're gonna see on the bottom of the switch is that we do have the little rubber feet. I put them on solely because I knew that we we're gonna have them on the studio tables and stuff. And just, I, uh, I didn't wanna wreck this table up more than it already is. And then the other thing is that we also got rack mount ears in the box. Speaking of that accessory box, um, just kind of show you guys kind of the other things that are in here. Um, you know, we got a, uh, we got a, a Chinese power cable. So uh, we got that because when you buy things on Taobao, usually you get the Chinese version, not a EU, AU or US version. We had the little 3M thing for the sticky feet. 
We also had our grounding cable because of course, this passed quality inspection. And then we have our little packing list. Okay, now about 15 screws later, we can finally get into the chassis and see what's inside. Now, taking a look inside the switch, you're gonna see that we have our power supply up top. This is an internal power supply, so you can't replace it like we've seen on some other like MicroTik units that are in this price band-ish. Now on the side over here, you're gonna see that we have three fans and I'll tell you that they are quite noisy. We'll let you hear it during our power consumption tests. Now on the main switchboard, you're gonna see a couple of features that I, I think are really interesting. The first one is that we have a total of 12 of these little tiny heat sinks. And if you take the fact that we have 48 two and a half gig ethernet ports and there are 12 of these little heat sinks here, that means that each of these little switch chips has a total of 10 gigabits. So four by two and a half that, you know, that's kind of like their, their bandwidth to these ports. And then their uplink bandwidth is another 10 gigabits. This is kind of fun that we have a total of 13 switch chips in this switch. So over to the side, you're gonna see that we have our SFP plus and SFP 28, 10 and 25 gig ethernet ports. But the big thing that we wanna look at is the main switch chip. Now, something that I did notice on this is that if you look around this main switch chip, you're gonna see that there's a ton of thermal paste on the PCB of the switch anyway. And that, we didn't do that. That just kind of came like that. So I don't think that these things are necessarily like, oh, let's go make the highest quality 48 port, you know, $400 switch that we can. I think, uh, you know, they're, they're definitely maybe saving some money on the manufacturing of these. Now, one of the other really interesting things here is that if you look at the memory, we have a total of five micron memory memory modules here. Um, Micron in China is, is, as we're recording this video, perhaps not the, the most welcome site, but I just think it's interesting that there is so much memory here. A lot of times when you have a switch chip, you have like like maybe one like little memory module, like one DRAM module, and that's it. You don't necessarily see five as often, especially in a switch of this class. The other small thing you're gonna see is that this little chip right here is actually a SanDisk storage module. It's the EMC, I think, storage module. And so this, uh, this actually uses SanDisk for memory. We're not even using some kind of like strange brands. This is Micron and SanDisk here. Okay, I just wanna talk really quickly about the switch chip that's in this because um, we actually pulled the heatsink off just because I was super curious on like, you know, what, what kind of switch chip this would be. And it turns out it's a microchip Spar X5, which means it's also, when we pulled the heatsink off, it was a VSC 7556 six, which is the second to highest end model in that, that line. And, and there are a whole bunch of different applications that microchip has for the switch chips, but they're basically a, a layer two and three switch chip. And they're different things. They have all the way from like, kind of like an unmanaged version of software that you can put on here, all the way up to a web managed and different versions of web managed software, which this one actually uses. We're going to show that in the management section, but maybe the more important thing between the VSC 7556 and the higher end VSC 7558 is the 7558 eight has a, I guess, 200 gigabit per second switching capacity, whereas this one only has a 160 gigabits per second. And why that really matters for a switch like this is that if you look at the total port count that we have, we have a total of 48 two and a half gig ethernet ports, which I think is like 120 gigabits per second total of, uh, of bandwidth. And then you also have a, you know, two 10 gig ports, that's another 20, which is 140. And then you have two more 25 gig ethernet ports, which is 50 total. And that puts you at 190, which is uh, quite a bit more than 160. So actually this switch chip is kind of cool because it has the CPU power, I think it's like a dual core ARM CPU or something to be able to like run a decent uh, management interface and, and a decent number of features. But at the same time, um, you know, it's kind of a bummer that they didn't use the higher end version. When we looked up the list pricing on the switch chips, it was only a little bit more to buy the higher end unit from microchip, but I guess, you know, it's something that when you're buying it for like, you know, 400 ish dollars in China, maybe, uh, maybe an extra 10, 20 bucks is, is a lot of money there. At the same time, if I were building this switch for the US market, I would totally go and use the higher end chip. Okay, to say that I was a little bit nervous about the management interface is a, probably a little bit of an understatement. So we are using a little throwaway Project Tiny Mini Micro PC just to go and be able to do this. And then, you know, we'll wipe that machine after. And then, uh, but when we logged in, uh, actually we saw things that were a lot better than we thought. You go to your management interface at 192.168.1.234 and admin admin, which are on the bottom of the unit. And you get into what is actually a pretty decent web management interface. And just kind of clicking through here, you can th see things like we can go set quality of service. We can set things like VLANs. 
There are also features like supporting SDP and a whole bunch of other things that are in this that are actually a lot better than I thought they would be. In fact, not only that, but this thing also has things like the ability to have multiple firmware images. So if you like mess up a firmware image, you can roll back to the other one. And there are all kinds of stuff that, you know, frankly, this is a much better management solution than I was expecting. I was expecting something that was pretty bare bones and not very good. And this was, uh, you know, a little hard to navigate, but kind of once you get into it, you realize there's a lot there. And oh, by the way, Rohit managed to set up LACP and uplink this switch to a micro tick switch and that is a pretty killer combo let me just tell you that having you know the the micro tick for kind of that like higher speed network and then having this for like a whole bunch of two and a half gig ethernet ports i thought that's super awesome Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the power consumption of the switch because it was pretty significant actually. And that makes sense because this is a much, uh, I guess a much bigger switch chip. It also has better management capabilities with all that like DRAM and, and memory and stuff around it. But we're gonna be using the same power meter that we used in our two and a half gig ethernet switch roundup. We're gonna use a similar methodology just to kind of give you some data points on the switch. So first off, just at idle, this thing was using about 38 watts or so. When we plugged in a two and a half gig ethernet link to one of the ports, that raised the overall power consumption, I think by about like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 watts or so. So it was actually in line with a lot of the smaller units that we've seen. When we plugged in a SFP plus to 10 G base T adapter, it was added another about watt or so. So I think the big thing here is that if you're gonna use this switch, but you only wanted to have maybe like four or five devices attached to it, I think this probably uses too much power for that. But on the other hand, you may just want the capabilities that the switch has. And so if you do, I guess maybe that's, that's a reason to do that. So let me switch this on and I'm gonna let you listen to how loud it is. So when you first turn on the switch, it's uh, it's actually relatively quiet as you can probably see that we have some blinky lights, but then the fan comes on once it's fully booted. And just to give you some idea, because this is probably pretty loud, this actually runs at about 60 dBA if you have a sound meter right next to it, 61 somewhere in there in this 34 dBA noise floor studio, right? So this is not a silent switch and like it's only been on for maybe 30 seconds or something like that. And I definitely do not want to keep listening to this. So I'm going to turn it off now. Really quickly, I do want to talk about performance of the switch because that's an important thing. We didn't necessarily get full 190 gigabits per second that we would expect on a switch like this, um, which which was interesting. I thought maybe there was a chance that we we're going to run everything in line rate, but something clearly is, uh, is, is a challenge for the switch. And even though the switch chip said it was a 160 gigabit per second switch, we didn't actually get 160 gigabit per second. We got a little bit below that. So on one hand, I guess the way you look at that is like, it's not actually doing line rate on all the ports, which is kind of a bummer. On the other hand, for a like $400 managed switch, the fact that it's even pushing this much traffic is pretty good. And if you were doing something like you had, I don't know, like an eSports cafe or whatever, maybe you're figuring that you're not gonna fully saturate this switch all the time, which makes sense. And so I guess, I guess that's probably the design target and maybe they just are a little bit internally oversubscribed just because they're like, we don't really care that much because it's never gonna be a problem. So on one hand, I guess you could look at the performance as pretty disappointing. On the other hand, you could look at the performance and say, well, for that amount of capacity, that's actually probably the, the best value switch that's on the market. So just, just some ideas for you. Okay, so like, what did we learn about the switch? Okay, number one, I probably used a little more power than I thought it was gonna use, but it's actually not too, too bad. The overall noise is um, is definitely a little bit louder than I would have liked, but um, at this price range, sure, and this is probably sitting in an equipment co closet anyway. And if you're in an eSports gaming cafe, there are people probably yelling, I don't know. So maybe nobody even cares that this is so loud. But the number one thing I have to say about this switch is that it's a lot higher quality than I thought it was gonna be. I thought that this thing was gonna be complete garbage inside, and it turns out that it, it actually wasn't. If you just need some decent bandwidth and stuff like that, then I think that a switch like this is awesome. And that gets me to my real key lesson learned, which is why can't we have things like this in the US and EU? I mean, if you look at a managed 48 port, one gigabit switch where you have like 10 and maybe, or you know, enough 10 gig or 25 gig ports like this for uplink, I mean, you're probably gonna spend more than this switch anyway. And this is a two and a half gig ethernet switch. I just don't understand why we can't get this design or even something close to this in something that we can get in the US or EU. This is the design. All you really need to do is figure out how to get all the regulatory markings and approvals for this, and you're ready to sell this thing and probably 
probably sell it. Hey, we don't have to do it for 400 bucks. Maybe if it was five or $600, I would say this would be the best value switch even at those prices. The last thing I wanna get to is whenever we do these videos, people always ask like, aren't you totally freaked out that these things are gonna steal all of your data or something like that? And like, like I guess in some ways I am a little bit concerned about the security stuff and that is why we actually go put these things on a Wireshark network and just kind of like see what they do for a little bit. And uh, and we're, we're not gonna review any that, you know, are passing weird traffic or something like that that we can see. Now, of course, you know, could you get another one with different firmware? Sure. Could, you know, there be something that turns on after like six months that we're not gonna see? Yeah, of course there is. But frankly, we're not the right folks to go and do like a super deep dive into the security of these things. But what I can tell you on a more practical level is that a switch like this, or even some of the lower power switches that we review, you know, frankly, they can't just take all of your data, right? Because you would obviously see if you had a 10 gig, 25 gig, if you had two and a half gig, if you had half of the switch bandwidth that was just being used to just go exfil data, number one, it would be hard enough to get a WAN pipe that would do that. And you'd choke your entire WAN pipe. And like, like, of course, you know, you can't just pull all the data off of a switch, which would mean that you'd have to select the data that you would want. And if you had to select the data, you need the processing power to figure out what you want and what you don't want. So would I be nervous that one day this could be used for something like a DDoS attack or something like that? Yeah, I totally would be worried about that. But I'm a little less worried about the idea that like, you know, all of the traffic that's on this switch is being decrypted and then like, like sent to somewhere. Because frankly, if this switch had encrypted traffic on it, this switch is not powerful enough to go inspect it, figure out what it needs and then send it up in a uh, in a format that, um, you know, nobody's gonna go see the flow, right? But hey guys, I hope you like this look at this little switch that's powering all these esports cafes in China. I think this is actually an awesome little switch and I hope you really enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, well, why don't you check out some of our other videos? We have tons of two and a half gig ethernet content if you want to see those. And if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.